Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Piper Report. So, a judge in the UK is upset of this rampant knife crime that's happening over there. So, he has a brilliant suggestion. Let's start implementing knife control. We can start by making sharp knives duller. Dullest? More dull? Duller. We can start by making sharp knives duller. Yes. Very good idea. Now, the judge is a retired judge, so... Thank God we don't have, or the UK doesn't have people like him in their court systems, although I'm sure there are many others just like him, but it's funny. Whenever you get into an argument or a debate with somebody who is against the Second Amendment, and you always say, guns don't kill people, people kill people. They always look at you with that skull on their face, and you're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Weapons, they are used as weapons. People kill people using guns. Without guns, there wouldn't be crime. It's something to that effect. I may have distorted their voices a little bit, but eh, maybe not. And you always have to look back at them and say, it doesn't matter the weapon you use. If somebody wants to kill somebody else, they will find an object to do so. It could be a gun, it could be a car, it could be a knife. It could be a baseball bat. How do you fix it? You can't simply ban all of the potential weapons in society. You just can't do that because there will always be weapons. There will always be objects that can be used potentially as a weapon. This notion that as long as we keep banning things and banning things, we're, we will only become a more prosperous country. We will become a safe country. It lacks foundation because as we are seeing now in the UK, they are very, they have very strict gun control, very strict gun control, yet their knife crime rate has been going up through the roof. And the very first response they give to this soaring high crime is knife control. Yes, because that always works. It's just, it's sad, but it's funny at the same time that people actually believe these arguments that they're making. There are actually people that believe in knife control. And after this, if it does happen, if it does get utilized and implemented, there will be people that want to push baseball bat control, maybe even car patrol, car control. Who knows? You might not be able to drive to work anymore in the UK. But this is why the argument they make is always so fundamentally flawed. Because they, use, they base it on emotion. They don't base it on facts. They don't base, base it on statistics. They don't base it on reality. They base it on emotion. And if they see a crime happening, they right away assume the weapon used is responsible for the crime. Not the person holding it, but the weapon itself. And when you come into an argument with that type of, menta with that type of mentality, when you, you are using that mentality to argue your position, then you will always be in a position of subordination. You will never be in a position of power when you use things to argue that lack foundation. This is why you will always lose the argument. You have to accept the way things are. Not like Sadiq Khan wants you to accept it. He's the mayor of London who says we should accept terror attacks as a normal way of life. No, you should want to stop that. But you shouldn't assume that it is strictly the weapons that are being used that is the main instigator for terrorism. Maybe it could be the ideology behind the terrorism. Maybe that could be an issue. But you can't talk about that because th that's a demagoguery. You cannot bring demagoguery up unless using demagoguery basically reinforces and substantiates your own argument and your own ideology. But where was I now? They bring all this stuff up and it just it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have to argue using statistics. You have to argue using facts. You have to leave emotion at the door if you truly truly want to gain progress you have to put blame in those that well deserve the blame most recently with this whole roseanne issue now forgot who it was i think it was actually the person roseanne was accused of using racist remarks against i think it was her don't quote me on that but she said that she blames donald trump for this that donald trump is responsible for this type of attitude and again that is this whole regressive narrative that they cannot put blame on one particular person. They have to blame either on a weapon or they have to blame some 
buddy who's just not even related to it at all, but since he's in a position of power and it's good to blame him, they will choose to blame him. I'm talking, of course, about Donald Trump. I mean, people still blame Donald Trump for Charlottesville. There are so many things that people blame Donald Trump for that he had nothing to do with. But since he, he's in a position of power, they feel that they can blame him and people just eat it up because people, many people are brain dead. Many people are easily brainwashed. And I'm going on a huge digression here. Let's get back to the article. A judge has proposed a nationwide program to file down the points of kitchen knives as a solution to the country's soaring knife crime epidemic. Last week in his Val Victoria address, retiring Luton Crown Court Judge Nick Madge spoke of his concern that carrying a knife had become routine in some circles and called on the government to ban the sale of large pointed kitchen knives. Latest figures show stabbing deaths among teenagers and young adults have reached the highest level for eight years, and knife crime overall rose 22% in 2017. In the past 12 months, he said, there have been 77 knife-related incidents in Bedfordshire, including three killings. Judge Madge told the assembled judges, barristers, and court staff, these offenses often seem motiveless. One boy was stabbed because he had an argument in a couple of years before at his junior school. He said laws designed to reduce the availability of weapons to young would-be offenders had had almost no effect since the vast majority had merely taken knives from a cut cutlery drawer. He said, a few of the blades carried by youths are so-called Rambo knives or samurai swords. They though are a very small minority. The reason why these measures have little effect in that the vast majority of knives carried by youths are ordinary kitchen knives. Every kitchen contains lethal knives, which are potential murder weapons. And he is 100% correct about that. Just like every garage will probably have some type of object that could also be used as a weapon. Most garages have cars in them. Most garages have cans of gasoline. Most garages have equipment in there that could maybe kill somebody as well. Maybe gardening shears. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. The problem with this list is that they think that they can quit, just keep banning these weapons or banning these objects over and over, and eventually, what, you can ban so many objects that society will be safe? No, that's nothing to do with it. The weapons people use aren't responsible for the maleficent actions those people commit. As soon as you accept that, as soon as you understand that, then you are finally able to argue from a position of strength. But until you realize that, you will always be on the bottom rung of the ladder. You will never be able to win a debate because people will use facts and statistics and just probability and analytics and they could prove you wrong easily. The regressive left, they have, a lot of, they have a lot of problems to this regard. They don't know how to argue properly. However, their influence is so vast because they have so many members of the mainstream media that their insane arguments, their insane push for controls on the objects, they are believed by many people. Many people truly believe that if you ban certain objects, that crime will actually get better. They truly believe this. And some of them, see, some of them believe it just because they're told to believe it. And they're not that strong-willed. Their mind and their just inclinations are kind of malleable. They're moldable. They're easily influenced. But other people, they believe they are right. And they are set. They are set in their decisions. And then they go out and argue and they make a fool of themselves. So if the regressive left really wants to tr change things, they have to quit arguing based on emotion. That's what it comes down to. You can't argue based on emotions and expect to have a positive result. You have to argue using facts, statistics, analytics, everything, and just common sense, just common sense. And I'm done.